Yes, that's on me. Yeah. Good morning. Welcome to Kelly Baptist Church. This morning is January the 10th, the year of our Lord, 2021. And I think I've sometimes said 2020, but I'll probably make that mistake again. But welcome to Kelly Baptist Church this morning. Um, this message, it seems as though each message the Lord gives me to preach each week is so current that it gives me chills to see what he has me to say to the church and then what happens during the preparation of the message. Now, as we go to slide two, I want to remind you of last week's message. Is it bird brain or blasphemy? Well, it ends up it's both. Last week, all of Satan's demons were released when the bird brain prayer was given from Congress. To open up the 117th Congress, and Emmanuel Cleaver prayed in the name of the devil himself and called down the gods, Brahma, and every other faith, including Wiccan and Satanic cults. So what's happened since he prayed and set the table for the devil? All the demons have been serving up the food ever since. And there's no question about it that all hell's demons have been released not on the impetus of Satan himself, but on the invitation of our government. And we see what has occurred since then. But I want to tell you this morning, this isn't a message of fear that we're worried about Washington or Nancy Pelosi. This is a message of hope and strength and power and boldness. The Lord Jesus Christ. And no one said it better than Billy Graham himself. Turning to their cult, we're turning to their scholars. Oh, please tell us what the future is going to hold. What do you see in the stars? What do you see in the palm of our hands? Is it good or bad? Was I born under a good star or a bad star? What is my sign? In our moment of crisis, we're turning to the same people that Belshazzar did. But just as in his day, they couldn't read. Because you see, God is doing a work in our world that they don't know anything about. Habakkuk said, Lord, please tell me what you're doing. And God said, no, I'm not going to tell you, Habakkuk. Because if I told you what I was doing, you wouldn't leave. If God today told us what he's doing in the world, we wouldn't believe it. Don't you think God's given up and God's abdicated and God's left the throne? He hasn't. He's still on the throne. And those of us that know him put out trust in him and him alone. I don't put my trust in Washington. I don't put my trust in the United Nations. I don't put my trust in myself. I don't put trust in my money. I put my trust in the Lord Jesus Christ. When all the rest of it fails and crumbles and shatters, he'll be there. Let's go to the Lord in prayer. Lord, this morning we come to you in the blessed name of Jesus again. And Lord, we ask that you remove the spirit of fear from all who hear this message and replace it with the filling of the Holy Ghost Spirit of God himself. Lord, may we be renewed this morning. May we be reinforced. May we be reminded that you are God and our faith is not in a government or a job or an education or a degree. Our hope is in you, the living Most High God. And I pray this in the name of Jesus Christ, our Savior. Amen. There was a study done of the fears that people feared the most in their lives. Fear is a real thing. If it weren't a real thing, then we would not need for the Bible to have said, 365 times, no coincidence, fear thou not. 
<laughs> so because God knew we would have fear, there would be a spirit of fear in the world that can overtake us, he's reminding us, do not fear. And I need to be reminded, do not fear. And this morning, I'm, I'm reminding us that fear has consequences. It causes mental and physical illness. It causes cardiovascular disease. I'm, I'm a subject of fear having caused cardiovascular problems, a heart attack, six bypasses, and all kinds of things because of stress. Fear is cumulative. Fear causes problems with our immune system. People are scared to death of the coronavirus. That's not an oxymoron. Scared to death. It, fear is the poison that is in the corona. It's real. Judy had it. She nearly died from it. I know it's real, and people are afraid of it. It causes depression. We don't want to get out of our homes. We feel like we're under a dark cloud. It causes anxiety which is the anticipation of something bad about to happen, but it hasn't happened yet. Cumulative fear can be totally debilitating. We are living in a time of fear. If you watch the news, they're doing everything they can do to frighten you. You see uh, before you a chart. This is a current chart, which was a huge survey done of the United States of America by Chapman University. And it lists the top ten fears of Americans today. Now, the last time it was taken, five years ago, you know what the top fear of people in the United States was? Fear of speaking in public. That was the number one fear. Today, 73% of Americans say their top fear is corrupt government officials. I think... I'm in that group. I mean, I'm not afraid of them, but I am cognizant of the reality of how they affect my life every day and how they, their corruption and their wickedness, we saw in the prayer last week, has invited Satan and his demons to run our government. The second one is pollution of oceans, rivers, and lakes. Number three, pollution of drinking water. Number four, not having enough money for the future. Number five, fear of a loved one becoming ill. Number six, fear of a loved one dying. Number seven, air pollution. Number eight, global warming. Number ten, high medical bills. And let me just stop and ask you right now, what good is worrying about those ten things going to do to change them? Nothing. Absolutely nothing. Living in debilitating fear of what might happen is going to do nothing to change it for the better. We don't choose fear, Kelly Baptist Church. We choose faith and power in the Most High, in the living God, Jesus Christ. But it's not that way everywhere. You see, 33% uh, of alcohol sales have increased since the coronavirus. I didn't make that up. That's a fact from the sales receipts. And I'm ashamed that our own police jury has gone on record to promote the sale of alcohol just so they could get some more money to spend unwisely. And I want to tell you, we're going to stick together until that Sunday alcohol sales is reversed. We're not going to help them with any tax increases of any kind because look what it's gone. It's going to make a drunken, disorderly Caldwell Parish. Period. But there's no hope in drugs. There's no hope in alcohol. Go to a, a, someone who's been captured by alcohol, who's in Alcoholics Anonymous. And I have family members who are part of Alcoholic Anonymous who has been debilitated by drugs and spent months in drug rehabilitation centers and ask them, well, when did you become an alcoholic? You know what they're going to tell you? When I took the first drink. You don't, be, you don't have a measurement at which you become dependent upon it. Same thing with fear. Fear will grip you and overcome you if you allow it to. The leading cause of death in the world, you know, on this earth, in the year 2020, is abortion. 
That's the leading cause of death in this world. 42 million people, souls, that were knitted together by God himself and named by him, were murdered, and guess where it's most legal? In these United States of America. Don't tell me Satan's not been having a heyday. Don't tell me we don't have wicked government leaders. Folks, when a person is filled with the spirit of fear, there is nothing he can do but be afraid. Would you agree with that this morning? I just need to hear some amen. 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 Fear can own us. Fear can paralyze us. And I want to tell you, fear can kill us if we allow it to. But folks, when a person is filled with the Holy Spirit of God, there is nothing that God cannot do through him or her. Do you believe that this morning? So we have the choice of being filled with fear or being filled with the powerful Holy Spirit of God. I want to remind us of a great mighty man who was filled with fear. His name was Peter. Remember, he was a scared little mouse when Jesus was crucified and Jesus told him he prophesied that he would deny Jesus that night three times before the rooster crowed. Read with me together in Matthew 26. If you'll stand with me. Matthew 26, we're reading verse 69 through 75. When Peter betrayed Jesus, the mighty rock upon his belief, upon which the very church we're in today, the New Testament church was built, he fell apart. Matthew 26. Read with me. Now Peter sat outside in the courtyard, and a servant girl came to him saying, You also were with Jesus of Galilee. But he denied it before them all, saying, I do not know what you, who you are saying. And when he had gone out to the gateway, another girl saw him and said to those who were there, This fellow also was with Jesus of Nazareth. But again, he denied an oath. I do not know the man. And a little later, those who stood by came up and said to Peter, Surely you are one of them, for your speech betrays you. Then he began to curse and swear, saying, I do not know the man. And immediately the rooster crowed. And Peter remembered the words of Jesus, who had said to him, before the rooster crows, you will deny me three times. So he went out and wept bitterly. Thank you, you may sit. Folks, I'm telling you this morning that fear can grip anyone, saved or unsaved. Fear can take over our lives and debilitate us. And if we let it, we will deny Jesus Christ because we're more afraid of fear than, than our faith in him. Look with me in the book of Mark, Mark 14, 51. We know from reading the scriptures that Mark was a young disciple. His mother lived in Jerusalem, so it's believed on this very night. He was probably staying at his mother's house, and he heard the commotion when the guards had, uh, over 500 troops had come to take Jesus, and he ran down there, and Mark wrote this himself, 1451, a young man who was following him wearing nothing but a linen sheet over his naked body. He was asleep. He got up from where he was sleeping. He only had a sheet on him. And when the guard seized him, or tried to seize him, when they were seizing Jesus himself, the Bible said he pulled free of the linen sheet and ran away naked. Folks, we are running away naked from the very truth that can save us because we are not totally filled with the Holy Spirit of God. And this morning, I want to challenge us to be filled with the Spirit of God. Now turn with me over to Acts 3, and we see Peter again. But it's not the same Peter. It's a new Peter. Peter so filled with the Holy Spirit that he is so bold, he screams his allegiance to Jesus Christ and he doesn't care who hears him and he isn't running from anybody and he isn't cursing Jesus, he's blessing Jesus. That shows you what the power of the Holy Spirit can do in your life if he did it in Peter's life. Acts 3, 6 through 10, Peter said, 
Now, let me give you some background. He, had, he and John had gone to the temple, and they were going in to preach, and they came before a lame man, and the lame man's laying there begging for alms. Alms, for, and he couldn't walk. He was over 40 years old, had never walked. And so Peter responded to him, Silver and gold I do not have, but what I have, do have I give you. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, rise up and walk. And he took him by the right hand. That's important. And lifted him up, and immediately his feet and ankle bones received strength. So he, leaping up, stood and walked and entered the temple with them, walking, leaping, and praising God. And all the people saw him walking and praising God. And they knew that it was he who sat begging at the beautiful gate of the temple. And they were filled with wonder and amazement at what had happened to him. Peter, who denied and cursed Jesus himself, is now so filled with the Holy Spirit that in the name of Jesus he believed so strongly, he knew that he knew that he knew that Jesus Christ could do anything said to the lame man who had been lame for over 40 years, never walked, take up my hand and walk. Now that's faith. Do you see any fear in that? No, I don't. Do you want to have that kind of faith? I do. Do you want to be that filled with the Holy Spirit of God? I do. How can we do that? Remember, this is the same Peter who blasphemed Jesus. Peter, in this scripture, was filled with the Holy Spirit of God. The Spirit of God replaced the spirit of fear with himself. And folks, this morning, that spirit of fear that's been creeping in our life with all that's going on, we need to pray to the Lord Jesus Christ to fill me with your spirit and remove the spirit of fear. Amen? Amen. How do I know this? Because it says it right here, Brother Kenneth. It's in the book. For performing a miracle, this is, we're going to read this in just a minute. When he performed that miracle, guess who had him arrested? The leaders of the church, the Pharisees and Sadducees. You know why? Because they didn't believe in Jesus Christ. They knew the scripture. But they didn't believe the scripture. They, didn't, they, they were scared to death of Jesus being God. Because they would lose all their money, all their standing, and all their ritualistic authority. Satan doesn't want to lose his authority over you. He's going to kill, steal, and destroy to keep his hand on you and to keep fear in your life. Do not be afraid. For he that is in you is greater than he that is in the world. Amen? Mm -hmm. The spirit of fear had left them and the spirit of God filled them. Are you filled with the powerful, bold spirit of Almighty God for whom nothing is too hard to do? That raising up of that lame man was nothing for God who created him so that he could be glorified. Turn to Acts 4. Look in your Bibles at Acts 4, verses 1 through 12. I'm going to read there. Now as they spoke to the people, this is when Peter and John are before the Sanhedrin, the Pharisees and Sadducees, the the Jewish church government. As they spoke to the people, the priests, the captain of the temple, and the Sadducees came upon them, being greatly disturbed at what Peter and John were doing, performing miracles in Jesus' name. That they taught the people and they preached in Jesus the resurrection from the dead. And they laid hands on them and they put them in custody until the next day, so they were in jail overnight. For it was already evening. However, many of them who heard the word believed, and listen to this, the number of men came to be about 5,000. 5,000 people were saved when that lame man got healed. Now, they weren't saved because of a miracle. They were saved because they got filled and believed in the Holy Spirit of God. That's what he'll do when we believe. And it came to pass on the next day that their rulers, elders, and scribes as well as Annas, the high priest, <coughs> Caiaphas, John, and Alexander, as many as were the family, all the high priests came together, were gathered at Jerusalem. And when they had set their mind, they talked together in the midst. They asked, by what power or by what name have you done this? Now the test is about to come. Peter and John are going to be asked, in whose name, by what power, 
do you live your life? And I want to ask you today, by what power do you live your life? Is it the power of fear? Is it the power of, I got a good job? Is it the power of my bank account's okay? Or is it the power of the Holy Spirit of God that's filled you so full you can't be afraid? And you have to be bold. And here's what the response was. Peter, look at the next five words. Filled with the Holy Spirit. This isn't scared Peter. This isn't three times Peter denying Jesus, cursing Jesus. He'd been changed because he was filled, Dusty J, with the Holy Spirit of God. You believe that? I do too. He said to them, rulers of the people and elders of Israel, if we this day are judged for a good deed done to a helpless man by what means he has been made well, let it be known to you all and to all the people of Israel that by the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, whom you crucified, one week before they crucified Jesus Christ because he claimed to be God. Is Jesus your God? Or is he a convenient Savior to which you run when you get afraid? There's a great big difference. Whom God raised from the dead. By him this man, the lame man, stands before you whole. They couldn't argue with him. Everybody knew he was lame. Four decades he laid there crying for alms. And all of a sudden he was running and jumping and shouting and praising God. The evidence, the manifestation of faith in Jesus Christ was before them. That's the kind of faith we need to have. When people look at us, they look at us, Dustin, and say, I remember you when, and I know you now, and something's changed about you, and I want to know what it is, because I want some of it. And it's the feeling of the Holy Spirit. Peter said, this is the stone which was rejected by you builders. Jesus Christ was rejected, which has become the chief cornerstone, nor is there salvation in any other. Listen, last week, Emmanuel Cleaver prayed that there is salvation through Brahma, through Satanic, through Wiccan, through every other name that can be named of any kind of faith. And when the devil got invited into the Congress of the United States, the doors flew open. You believe that? Have we seen it this week? I know we have. When a man, a woman, a child gives themselves over to Satan, he's going to accept you. And he's going to fulfill what he said he would do. He will possess. And that's what's happened. You think this sermon last Sunday was preached, and then this sermon this Sunday is preached by coincidence? If it's preached by coincidence, I need to go home and resign. It's preached by the power of the filling of the Holy Spirit of God. Does Washington need to be filled with the Holy Spirit? Mm -hmm. I believe so. And I think it's going to take only an act of God to turn the wickedness that's going on in Washington today. Let me finish. He said, there is, nor is there salvation in any other, for there is no other name under heaven given among men by which you must be saved and we've made salvation a goody goody two shoes thing and, and you've been condemned if you say there's only one thing only one way only one path only one gate only one door only one Savior Jesus Christ we get condemned for it and they're shutting us up on the media have you seen where Facebook and Twitter and Apple have banned the conservatives from speaking their mind one day, you're going to try to turn on Facebook and watch Brother Joe preach, and it's going to be black. Because we're preaching the truth against you, Google and Twitter and Amazon. I don't even know who all of you are. But I do know this. The Bible says that Satan is the prince of the air. And that's where their powers come and go. And they have done their best to shut up the truth that Jesus Christ is Lord. And President Trump preached it and he prayed it. And then, now I'm not saying he's perfect or anything like that, but he has proclaimed the name of Jesus and you shut him up. You think you'll never shut up the name of Jesus Christ. God is sovereign. And just like Billy Graham said, 
in what Habakkuk preached and prophesied. I can't tell you what I'm doing, God said, because if I told you what I'm doing, you wouldn't believe it. We only see with our earthly eyes what's going on around us and the fear that it's instilling. But be assured, your God, your Savior Jesus Christ, by the power of His Holy Spirit, is at work. And I don't need to know what he's doing. You know what I need to know? I need to know him as my God, my Lord and Savior. That's all I need to know. The great evangelist Dwight Moody once wrote this. I do not believe there is any false religion in the world that men are not proud of. The only religion of which I have ever heard that men were ashamed of is the religion of Jesus Christ. Some time ago, I preached two weeks in Salt Lake City. I did not find a single Mormon that was not proud of being a Mormon. Think about it. Then he said, I never met an unconverted Chinaman who wasn't proud of being a disciple of Confucius and would say it to anyone. And I never met a Mohammedan who wasn't proud of the fact that he was a follower of Mohammed. Have you? I have but how many times have I found men ashamed of the religion of Jesus Christ? The only religion that gives men power over their affections and lust and sin. Folks, if there was a back door into heaven, too many Christians would ask to run into it rather than publicly standing up and saying, I want to be saved. I repent of my sins. Jesus Christ is Lord and baptize me in the holy water of baptism just like Jesus was. There are too many that would run through the back door of heaven. Peter and John were on their way to church. They came across a lame man begging for money. The money wasn't what Peter and John gave them. He said, silver and gold have I none, but I have something greater in the name of Jesus of Nazareth's walk. Jesus of Nazareth wants you to walk and run. He wants you to jump and praise Him. He wants you to be so filled with the Holy Spirit, you can't be quiet. And that's the sermon He has for us today. We have the same false leaders they had in Jesus' day. Not only is our government a great, evil, wicked government, and I mean, I'm not, this is not hyperbole. Anybody who stands upon Promoting and advocating and protecting to kill those 42 million little babies in one year, 42 million, is wicked. And we're seeing the wickedness rise up, even just this week, and there's more to come. And I want to tell you, maybe this is a prophetic word. I told you this last week. I said it's going to get a whole lot worse. It's going to get a whole lot worse through the lens of the world. But through the lens of the Holy Spirit of God, He never changes. And when we're stuck on Jesus, our faith is relentless and it doesn't change. We don't need to be afraid. He's got us. We don't have him. He's got me. Russell Moore and others have, in our Southern Baptist Convention leadership, have displayed their evilness. Russell Moore, <coughs> president of the ERLC, uh, evangelical religious leaders. It's a component of the Southern Baptist Convention. He's the one who promoted the mosque building in New Jersey with your Baptist tithes and monies. He is what I call the leader of the Islamic support movement. Let's support the Islam religion. Let's support, support Muhammad and Allah. You don't think that evil has crept into the Baptist Convention? Folks, there's not a lot of churches left who will call out Russell Moore for the satanic worship of Muhammad and Allah. Do you think God wanted Baal worship built so people would have a choice to worship Baal or to worship Jesus? I don't think so. And that's a sarcasm. I know not. I know better. Russell Moore... You need to repent and resign today. Well, here's what he said. Mr. President, now this is two days ago. Mr. President, people are dead. Trump didn't kill them. The Capitol is ransacked. <clears throat> Trump didn't ransack it. 
There are 12 dangerous days for our country left. Well, there may be less than that at the rate they're going. The wickedness of it. Could you please step down and let our country heal? Russell Moore, you have no more standing to say that than the devil does. Do you think that you're following Satan or Jesus Christ when you call for President Trump to step down? The only president who has stood up against the murder of babies and called the name of Jesus Christ and said there that every little child that you've been part of supporting the murder through Mohammedanism and building a mosque, he is the only one who stood against it. You don't think that God has his hand on him? He ain't through yet, folks. And I don't know what's going to happen. I, like Billy Graham, I don't know what God's up to. All I need to know is God. Mm -hmm. But thank God for Christians like Franklin Graham. Look what Franklin Graham said. Look at the contradiction between the evil wickedness of Russell Moore and the righteous life of Franklin Graham following in his father's footsteps. They had a right to protest. Peter and John protested, didn't they? They got thrown in jail for it, but they stood on the truth. To tell people to go home, it's not for me to decide that. The people who broke the windows in the Capitol did not look like people out there demonstrating. But most likely it was Antifa. And since then, have you seen the Antifa pictures come out? The guy with the horns and... And then the evil stuff painted all over him and the others who have been exposed as Antifa under the guise of Trump supporters. Now, we're not condoning breaking windows and hurting people. None of that. But I'm just quoting from our leader, Reverend uh, Franklin Graham. But for people standing out there peacefully holding flags and protesting, they have every right to do that. And I'm going to open my mouth and I'm going to protest wickedness and evil and fraud as long as I see it. And they can cut the off from here. We'll just fill this church and you know what we'll do? We'll add on to it if we have to. Brother James, is that right? Amen. We'll do it. We'll do whatever it takes, but we won't be quiet. Amos 3, 3 says, listen closely. Can two walk together except they be agreed? You can't walk with those people and not agree with them. Jesus Christ Walked with the sinners, but he never agreed with them. He pulled them and they were saved, the tax collectors and the prostitutes. You can't walk with the wickedness of Washington and say, Oh, I want to get along. I want to compromise. We've got to bring peace to the country. He didn't come to bring peace. He came to bring a sword. And his mouth, the truth, cut sharper than any two-edged sword, even down to the... <clears throat> Bones and the joints and the marrow of the soul. You believe that this morning? Mm -hmm. The truth will set us free. Despite the danger they faced, Peter and John were intimidated. They weren't ashamed. They weren't embarrassed and they weren't frightened. They had a spirit of boldness. They stood before their judges and with great confidence, with great boldness, they proclaimed the truth of the gospel of Jesus Christ in the name of Jesus Christ. And I'm preaching this sermon in the name of Jesus Christ this morning. They were spirit-filled and nothing could creep into them because there was no room for it. There was no room for fear because they were filled with the Holy Ghost of God. Mm -hmm. Are you filled with the Holy Ghost of God? If you're not, we're going to talk about how to get filled with the Spirit. When you're filled with the Spirit, you're changed. You're different. What changed them? The Holy Spirit filled them. Peter and John were filled with the Holy Spirit. We're, they were living in a frightening world. We're living in a frightening world. People are dying of the plague. People are being arrested right now for speaking freely. But I want to tell you this morning, are you afraid this morning? Isaiah 41, 10 said, Fear not, for I am with you. Be not dismayed, for I am your God. I will strengthen you. I will help you. I will hold you by my righteous right hand. He didn't say what you would do. He said, Macy, what he would do with you and for you. God's invisible hand is at work. We don't know what he's doing. But like Habakkuk said, you don't want to know what he's doing. You just want to know him. Romans 1.20 For since the creation of the world, God's invisible qualities, his eternal power and divine nature have been clearly seen. 
being understood for what has been made so that people are without excuse. We have no excuse. He has planted nature for us to see and to grasp the essence of his power and strength. Colossians 1.15 He, Jesus, is the image of the invisible God, the firstborn of every creature. And that's who Peter and John told those Pharisees in whose name they were speaking. Every word we speak needs to be in the name of Jesus. If you can't say the name of Jesus, you don't need to say it. Amen? When he cursed Jesus, that wasn't in Jesus' name. Everything we do needs to be in the name of Jesus. Jesus, God himself, is alive and working in this wicked world. And Nancy Pelosi and Chuck Schumer and Russell Moore and all their demonic collective will, uh, wickedness cannot stop the power of the Holy Spirit of God. Let's see again what the Bible has to say about it. Jesus' name we pray. Amen and amen.